Okay, a major bond exception is called hybrid orbitals. So that's what we're going to go over now. Okay, hybrid orbitals. I think the easiest way to go over it is just to use examples. So the first example I'm going to give you is beryllium. Okay, we're going to look at beryllium here. All right, let's look at beryllium. What group is beryllium in? Group two. 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 So its valence is two. two. So if we were to write beryllium as an electron dot diagram or a Lewis structure, same two. thing. How many dots? Two. 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 Where would we put them? Right, right in front of the E. Yeah, like right here. In general, we said that element X would have the S's here, P, P, and P. Okay? Now, here's the problem. This is the ABCs of bonding, but this is the reality. Beryllium, when it bonds with, let's pick fluorine. What kind of molecule is that, shape-wise? Non shape non-polar. Shape-wise. Non-polar and linear. 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 Okay. Can that produce that? Are they on the same side? So wouldn't you expect one fluorine here, one fluorine there? Then it'd be bad. Yeah. In other words, this doesn't the water. explain what really happens. So we needed to modify our theory. So instead of having the typical S and P orbitals, we're going to do what's called a hybrid. What does hybridization mean? That you take two things and combine them? Yeah, mix them. Mix them. So we have hybrid vehicles, right? Gas, electric. Hybrid dogs. We have all kinds of hybrid animals, all kinds of hybrid plants to increase productivity and all this kind of So let's take a look here. If I drew the electron configuration, beryllium is in row two. So the valence would be 2s, and there are two electrons, correct? Mm. Right? Okay. Now, what we're saying again, that doesn't work. You can't get this configuration from that. So watch what happens. Okay. There's another way of doing this. If we start with an s orbital, which is no problem, what would be the next one? What's the next valence sublevel? P. 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 Okay. How many electrons do I have? Two. two. So I'm only going to deal with two orbitals as well. One orbital for each electron. Okay. So S, the next valence would be P. And you know, we know there's a possibility to have up to three, three orbitals, correct? Yeah. But we only have two electrons to work with. So what happens if we take these and we hybridize them? You break them See how there's two here? We're going to mix up. So they're both going to be sp. They're going to be called sp orbitals. <laughs> and let's put an electron in each. Okay. So now, if we do that, we call this sp and this sp. This is the new explanation for how that bond actually happens. Okay. Because you can. Let's try boron. Okay. Boron is in what group? Three. Group three. So how many dots? Because that's three valence. Where would we put them traditionally? S. Two here in the S, and one somewhere else. We'll put it on the top for now. Yes, we will. Okay. Now, watch the bond for bor uh, boron. Did I say beryllium? Yeah. Watch the bond for boron. Okay. I'll, I'm going to put it over here. It bonds like this. That is called trigonal triangular, in other words, short. Trigonal planar. This is one of the Instead of three dimensional, like the tetrahedral and the pyramidal shape, it's really only like two dimensional. It's all in the same plane. So it looks like a triangle. Trigonal. Triangle. And planar means same plane. Now, take a look at it. This is what really happens. Can you get that from here? No. No. Our Simple bonding doesn't explain it. So we have to change our explanation. Let's do the same thing. This would be, watch this, 2s, and there'd be two electrons there, and then 2p would have one, correct? That's what the traditional would be. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we have three electrons, so let's play with it a little bit. We have s, and take a guess how many p's we'd use. We know P can have up to three orbitals, but we only have three electrons to work with. Then we're going to mix these. We're going to hybridize them. 
So they're all going to become SP. SP. SP2, right? Because there were two of them. Oh. SP2. Oh. SP2. And you put an electron in each. That allows these to become SP2, SP2, SP2. Why is it in Okay. Carbon is in what group? Four. So what's its valence? Four. How many dots? Four. Go one, two, three, four, correct? Yes. Watch how carbon bonds. You remember. And we call this tetrahedral. Tetrahedral, right? Now, can this produce this? No. No. There's no way this can produce no. Four equidistant <coughs> bonds. Right. Doesn't happen. No. Yep. So again, if we hybridize it, watch what happens. This time we will write this over here would be 2s. 2s. And then you got your p sublevels here. So 2p3. And you only need two of them here, see? So now let's let's hybridize them. Four electrons. Look, we use the s. And all three p's. So guess what it's called? 2p3. So let's do it again. S. Three P's, right? There they are. Now we're going to hybridize them. How many P's? Three. Uh huh. So SP3. that's what it's called. SP3. 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 Put an electron in each. SP3. Just a valence. Now you can get an equidistant bond. Again, this is an explanation, folks. This is a theory showing the tetrahedral shape. Okay, so you can see how it grows here. SP, SP2, SP3, they are hybrid orbitals. Make sense? Yes. Yeah.